All right, welcome everybody. Today we're gonna to be speaking about BIM virtual reality and augmented reality for food service design. This is the presentation that I did at the Host Milano show. So let's begin. And I'm gonna show you a, a short video that kind of gives a good understanding of where the industry is at. Architectural design is changing. What used to be visualized statically in two dimensions is now being explored dynamically in three-dimensional space. And it's about time. 3D allows for the exploration of space in the way it was always intended to be experienced, through immersion. It provides an experience not possible with static 2D renders. Until now, viewing these dynamic presentations required a high-powered workstation tethered to a mixed reality device in order to process the massive amounts of data in these complex models. Umbra makes this limitation a thing of the past. Umbra has been pushing the limits of 3D for over a decade as the de facto standard in optimization and visibility in the photorealistic video game industry, an industry leaps and bounds ahead of others in graphic fidelity. Umbra is now simplifying what was a complex architectural and construction workflow, while also giving an incredible sense of scale, depth, and spatial awareness that simply cannot be matched by traditional rendering solutions. Umbra enables rapid visualization and accelerates revision cycles, streamlining the entire design process. Now you can Umbrify your content with the click of a button to view on AR, VR, mobile, and web-based devices. Whatever your application or 3D content, Umbra can automatically optimize it for anyone, anywhere. 3D is big, and it's only getting bigger. How will you make the most of it? All right, so I chose that video because it just gives a good idea of where the industry's at, where the industry's headed. Um, it covers, you know, 3D modeling, virtual reality, augmented reality. Um, construction, how they all are going to kind of come together and, and meet to, to really make our, all of our jobs a whole lot easier. So to start, let's talk about virtual reality. So we're going to cover virtual reality, augmented reality, and something called merge reality in this presentation. Um, we'll start with virtual reality. So with virtual reality, you're in, immersed in a completely digital environment. There, you cannot see any real objects. Um, you always have goggles on that cover both of your eyes. You can't see daylight or anything outside. And so in this digital world, you know, you can build a digital, a digital model, which could be a food service design. Um, it could be an architectural building. It could be video games. It could be, you know, really any, any 3D um, scene. And so for, for a food service, you know, we, we look at virtual reality as, you know, for our clients, we can give them a virtual reality headset and they can visualize our food service designs. Um, you know, we, architects do the same thing, have clients visualize the interiors and exteriors of buildings that they design. So that's how virtual reality is going to be used um, in, the food service, in the food service world today. Next is augmented reality. So with augmented reality, you don't have these, these goggles that cover your face or your eyes. Um, there are some glasses that are like a visor that you can see through, but they, there's, you, know, you can see the real world around you. And so one of the things with augmented reality is you can use your phone or iPad. Um, all new phones in the last couple of years have augmented reality built into them. It uses the cameras and displays um, something like a hologram into the real world. And so there are also um, glasses or, or, you know, it's called the Microsoft HoloLens that we'll touch on later. That is an augmented reality headset. And it is really just a visor with a, a transparent screen that you look through and, and you can see again, these like holograms overlaid in the real world. And so with augmented reality, you're, you're superimposing an object, a digital object into the real world. And you can do it at a scale of one to one where, you know, these objects come in at a, at, you know, identically in the same size that they're created. Or you could do it at a scale of, you know, a very small scale. You could look at a whole building um, on a conference table and you could spin it around and, and do it so that you could see you know, each detail and you could zoom in and out and kind of change the scale on the fly. So one of the things with augmented reality that you know, I really want you to remember here is that because it can be used on a phone or an iPad, it's much more accessible to a, a much wider audience. Um, you know, virtual reality is an expensive headset um, and so with that, you know, comes a lot of barriers. Your your clients probably don't own virtual reality headsets or, or they don't use them for work. And so, 
these are things that if you want to do a virtual reality experience, you have to hand out these headsets or, you know, have these clients come to your office and actually use headsets that you guys own. Uh, whereas with augmented reality, you could just have them go to a website or, or download a mobile app or something like that, and they could just use their phone and iPad um, to actually, you know, receive your, your digital augmented reality model. Or maybe it's just a cook line or a piece of equipment or a bar or really anything that you may want to send them that they could then superimpose into their real world. And so with merge reality, we're combining the two things together. A good example of this is with the HoloLens. You know, it's an augmented reality headset, but you can actually click your fingers to open up menus and close menus. Um, and so that would be considered more of, of merged reality because you do have this, this real world interaction of you clicking your fingers that is being viewed by these augmented reality goggles that then interpret it to do something in augmented reality. So, you know, th these two things are definitely getting merged, but um, for, for this presentation, we're really gonna mostly cover them separately. Um, the HoloLens is, a, is kind of a special thing in its, in its own that we'll, we'll cover later on. So virtual reality. So, so one of the biggest things to understand here um, with this slide is, you know, it, you don't really have to understand PC gaming here. The, the idea here is that with virtual reality, you have two screens um, and both of those screens are at a higher resolution and at a faster frame rate. And it really is just a very, very demanding process on the hardware. And so this is really gonna come into play as, as to who can use virtual reality and how accessible it is. And, and really the, the, you know, the parameters of what can even be built to this day. And so this is just something that, that we'll keep touching on because because of this demand, you know, virtual reality, you know, up until just a, a few months ago, it still had to be corded and, and put to a really strong computer with a great graphics card um, and just to just to get it to work well. And that's all, you know, starting to really change. But um, that that certainly makes it um, much different than augmented reality where, you know, you not only don't have to have a headset, but, you know, it just doesn't, it's not nearly as demanding on the software that is uh, that is built into the augmented reality. So let's go over some of the basics here with virtual reality headsets. Um, they all started kind of with a Google Cardboard type headset. This really isn't virtual reality. Um, it's kind of more of a, a 3D panoramic steam, which we call a stereo panorama. Um, and you would put your phone in there and, and your phone would allow you to look through these, these single goggles and kind of look around a space. And so Samsung Gear VR was the, something they gave out with new Samsung phones. And it's pretty identical to the Google Cardboard. It has some options, it has a little remote, but for the most part, it's, it's just like a, a 3D scene that you're, you're looking around. You're not really moving around in the, in the virtual environment. Um, some of the, the, we're gonna go over some Oculus headsets here just because they kind of have a, a spectrum of them that kind of make it easy to kind of identify types of them. And so the Oculus Go is a, a newer headset that it kind of mimics the behavior of these original headsets where, you know, you can look around in a space. It doesn't really track or it does not track your location. So as you can't walk around in the space, but it does have a nice remote that allows you to kind of jump around. So it is certainly a step up and it's at the lowest price point here. And it also, as you can see here, it doesn't have any cords, which is going to be a big, a big part of this. And so next we're talking about the Oculus Rift. This was their first, um, I'd say like, you know, full v VR headset that was, you know, probably built as a gaming device and it was top of the line at the time. It really was the competitor, the HTC Vive. And so the reason I'm showing you this, this is kind of outdated now. There's a new Rift called the Rift 2, but these, um, these little stands here, these were sensors and you had to create a, um, you had to create a, a play zone or, or play area, as they would call it, by using these two sensors. And you would make a box, you'd put them diagonally across your room, and they usually have wires that ran all the way back to your computer. And you would basically create a, a 10 foot by 10 foot play area or, or something along those lines. And that way it would track you inside that play area using these sensors. So this headset would be tracked inside this play area just by these two sensors. And so it was a lot of wires and these sensors, you know, you had to physically set them up. And if you were traveling or something like that, you had to find a place to put them You'd find a table or something like that. You had to kind of be off the ground. And so it was just, um, it's pretty demanding. You see these large cords that had to be connected to your computer. And as you could imagine, you know, if you're wearing a headset and you can't see anything and all these cords have to be connected to your computer, it's just, um, it's just burdensome. 
And so next up, we have the Oculus Quest, which is um, a newer a newer VR headset, I think six months or eight months old. And as you can see, there are no wires. And this is a, a huge um, leap forward for just the whole virtual reality world. Um, with this headset, you know, it's it's not as simple as Oculus Go. It does have tracking. Um, it is more of a full virtual reality experiment or experience with no wires. And because it has a computer kind of built into the headset, it can receive, you know, it can receive experiences and things like that. There's um, a lot of softwares out there that are able to just use the Oculus Quest as one of the VR devices that they accept, and they can just send the actual 3D experience to the VR headset and allow somebody to join. So this is something that you know you could purchase and have at your office and hand out to clients, um, and that way they can they can join in these virtual reality experiences with you, which is something we'll go over when we get to the group virtual reality. And so finally, the Oculus Rift S and this is their new version of the Rift. I don't even think they sell the Rift anymore. As you can see, we don't have any of these tracking um, tracking sensors, and I think it's just one wire that has to go back to your computer. And the way they're they're doing this and getting rid of the sensors is now you can see these little sensors on the outside here. Um, those sensors are scanning your environment around you, and those are able to track. And so by by with those sensors, that that is able to track your movement. They don't have to use this whole play area. And so this is another another big deal. Um, just getting rid of these sensors is kind of getting more to this this wireless mentality, which allows you to really you know roam freely, you know, without having to be tethered to a, a really expensive computer. And so this right now is the top of the line um, virtual reality set from Oculus, and, and possibly the top of the line one on the on the market today. And so next, let's go over the software that you. Um, that you'll use to actually use virtual reality with Revit or really any of the, the BIM softwares. And so there's there's a bunch that aren't listed here. Um, I picked out a, a good number of them. We're gonna mainly talk about Enscape and, and Live Design, which is actually Revit Live. But Iris is actually super popular as well. I think Enscape and Iris are probably the, the two most popular. Um, and Revista was just a, a great all around software that also offers virtual reality. And so, some of the other softwares that we're gonna to touch on just briefly, um, these are animation softwares, uh, Unreal Engine, um, Unity, and 3ds Max. Um, if you wanted to add animations to your virtual reality experiment or experience, you'd need to use something like this. And these aren't required. I'm just gonna just, just, just put them out here just so you kind of understand. And so the, the ways to get to virtual reality, to, to send your Revit model or your, your BIM model to virtual reality, well, the easiest way is just to download any of these four softwares and they'll add a little add-in into Revit and you can just click a single button that says um, start virtual reality. Um, and so when you have a, a you don't have to have a headset plugged in, you can start virtual reality without the headset. Um, but when you do have a headset, it'll launch the headset as well. And so that's the quickest and easiest way. Um, if you wanted to do animations and things such as that, you could always go to 3ds Max and then go to Unreal and then send that to Virtual Reality. And you can also just use Unity just to do the same thing, add animations, renderings, more detail, um, moving cars, things like that. Um, and then you could go to Virtual Reality from there. So again, we're just going to talk about uh, Enscape and we're just going to touch on um, Revit Live just because that's a free virtual reality that comes with Revit. Um, next, I'm going to show you a demonstration of Enscape for Revit. To go to virtual reality, we're just going to go to the Enscape toolbar. This will show up in Revit once you download Enscape. And just press start. Well, we give this a second. And so this demonstration is actually going to be of the FCSI booth in uh, at the Host Milan show. Um, Roberto Assi of... FCSI EMI was kind enough to model the entire FCSI booth that was that was at the show into Revit. And I took that model and added a little bit more stuff to it and added some people and trees to, to kind of show you guys the power of Enscape and just the, the power of virtual reality. And so that's what we're gonna we're gonna walk around right now. All right, as you can see, these trees look great. Um, they, they all started rendering out. And down here at the bottom, you can see the controls of how we move around. So. By default, you can use your keyboard and you can use your mouse to kind of look around your keyboard to move. And there's two different modes, one to, to fly around 
where you can kind of fly through objects and one to walk around. So I'm going to drop down to the floor. And now we can walk around. And so you can see I can go through doors, but I can't go through physical objects like shelving or, or any other equipment. I also have my trusty Xbox controller here, so if you look at the bottom of the screen at the controls, once I plug this in, the controls will change, and now I can just use the Xbox controller to move around. And so all the controls are, are passed over to the Xbox controller, it can change the time of day, um, I can make the clouds move to, to show that the time of day is changing, um, I can jump back to 12 o'clock noon, I can move around, I can recenter, and you can also jump around from 3D views. So I'll show you just the rest of this model. This is just a piece of shelving in a closet. Here's a, some shelving closets. So here's, a, here's some of the people I put in, and these are um, called entourage families. So if you see a category called entourage of default families, those are actually the people in, and trees. And so here's some more equipment, bartending, bartender, and the actual kitchen, and a, a marble back counter. And so here up here, this is a TV, this is a decal, a picture put on there, same with those FCSI logos, and same with all the pictures you're seeing, those are all decals, we'll go over those in a bit. And so out there, that's, that's a car, that's another entourage family, and as you can see, I'll, I'll fall down because I'm, I don't have a floor to walk on. But you can see here's the car, and here's these trees, and you can see how great everything looks. So, before we leave, let me I can fly through these people, and get back so I can walk again. And we'll just bounce over to this, this last room. And all this equipment you see in here was actually in the booth, this prosciutto slicer. Um, was there, they were using it. So it was, it was a wonderful FCSI booth. And so here's where the uh, Italian English translator sat, and here's the room full of chairs, and, and this is where um, all the presentations happened. So this was um, just a little Enscape demo just to kind of show you what it looks like and how easy it is to use. All right, so as you saw, you know, getting to virtual reality is very, very easy. Um, but what will you see when you get there? And so, you know, getting there is the click of a button, download the software of your choice, click a button, go to this virtual environment, you can start walking around. And when I say, what will you see when you get there, you know, how do you know that, you know, your, your counters are going to come in with the stainless steel or, you know, your floor is going to come in with the actual color that you meant to put on there, or, or really even just that all your equipment is going to show up um, the way you wanted it to. And so here is a... 3D model that didn't Revit, and some of the things we're going to highlight are just some of the materials that um, I added onto some of these these um, serving counters. And so, also just you know, even the stainless steel that is on a pizza oven or or anything else, um, I'm going to show you that just so you know, you have to pay attention in Revit. You have to set certain things to get your stuff to come in the correct way, and there are some workarounds you can use also. So. The one of the things we're going to talk about this. This is a tile, um, a custom material I added onto the front of this counter. The, the architect had picked it out, and I had looked it up online. It got a, a image of what it looked like. Um, used that image to create this this custom material, and and now I wanted to show up in virtual reality. So this little green marker. This is going to be the the perspective that we're looking from. We're going to be looking off in this direction, just so you kind of get a lay of the land of of where you're looking at. And so the first tip I'm going to give you, um, use camera views to set, or use camera views set to realistic style. And so here's that little marker that I said, this is where the direction we're looking at. Um, in Revit, if you go to view, 3D view, and click the camera button, you can place a little camera and stretch it out and so that you're looking in this direction. And once you do that, then go over to your view and set it to realistic. And the result is something just like this. And the reason you want to set it to realistic is because that's going to give you the best um, visual image that's going to be closest to virtual reality. It's going to contain colors and materials. As you can see, this is this custom material I added. 
Um, this is some marble. These are just lights and stainless steel and white, white Corian. And so this is that realistic view. It, you know, this is, it's, it's fixed. You can't really move around. But um, in Enscape, if we did the exact same thing, this is what we would get. This is what we would see if we were in Enscape looking in the same direction. And so, you know, the marble comes in, white Corian comes in, lights and everything else looks great. But you can see that this material on the front of this counter isn't there. And so the reason for that is it was a custom material that I just created and Enscape matches up materials based on um, just some standards that they already have built in and each one has a, an asset. And so if you create a custom material like this, it won't come in to Enscape. That's just kind of, um, that's kind of standard. You can use plenty of other materials and they have links to lots of other materials, but some custom tile image that you create will not come in like that. Something that we can control is the, our default specialty equipment material. So this is another tip. And the reason this is, I mean, I'm telling you this tip is because if you don't set your default specialty equipment material, then you're gonna, you're gonna get it. Your things are gonna come into Enscape with just white. It's just not gonna look even like gray or stainless, um, which is usually what our default material is probably is most of the time, but it's gonna come in without a color at all. And so to set the default material, um, you would go to Visibility Graphic Overrides for a view, um, go to Model Objects on Object Styles, and then Find Specialty Equipment. And over here where it says Material, you would select um, Stainless Steel if that would be your default, which is which would be mine. And so if you see a Revit family and the material in the property says By Category, that's how you know it's using its default material. And so if this is specified as stainless steel, you don't have to worry about this particular family. But if there's families that just say by category, then you're gonna have to do this and set your default material to stainless steel. Um, otherwise, when they come in, they're gonna come in like this. You can see it's just this white color. And in Revit, unfortunately, you know when you create families, they kind of come in as a default gray looking color. So it, it, you know, it could certainly deceive some people and think that the, the material is already set to stainless or something like that. Um, and so you, you kind of won't even notice it until you get to this rendered environment where it doesn't have a, a material for this and it just gives it this blank white. And so you can see there's some a few other things. These heat lamps came in like that. Um, this is, uh, I think, uh, Ansel panel or something like that that also. So once you fix it, um, they'll all come in as stainless steel. And so the next tip we're gonna go over is use Rich photorealistic content, the RPC is the shortcut here. And so, or the acronym. And so this, these RPC families, these are the ones you're seeing right here, these all came with Revit. Um, they are kind of buried away. You can see this file path here, um, program data, Autodesk, RVT 2017, libraries, US Imperial, Entourage. Um, they're buried away in here, but you know they are they're there. They come with everybody's Revit, and they're actually really great for virtual reality. And the reason is that these are they look just like kind of blank Revit objects when you place them as families, but when you render them, they're linked to a, a asset that's like a 3D image. So as you saw in the demo, you know those characters or those people they come in really really great. They work they look great in your in your virtual reality and your renderings, and they really help you add just some human scale to your designs. And so unfortunately, there's no waiters or waitresses um, in the in the default stuff that Revit gives you. But I do have some things that I'm happy to share that you have some waiters and waitresses and I think maybe some barbacks um, and other restaurant like figures that I've kind of collected. Um, there's a somebody great named Jason Boeing, great Revit guy, those great families, and he created a bunch for Enscape. And so I'll happily share those things. And another thing that, is, that comes with RPC too is, is trees and shrubs and plants and things like that. Um, and I have a bunch of those I'll, I'll hand out too. And they also look really, really great when you get to these rendered environments. And another thing is like cars, um, really any of these, these photorealistic objects, a lot of it being exterior stuff. But it could also be things like small wares and, and, um, and food on shelves and and lots of other things, you know, R RPC is just a great way of putting a, a photorealistic 3D object um, into into renderings or into into a virtual reality experience, which is really just just rendering on the fly. And so, if you really wanted um, more of these RPC type families, you can look up 
arc vision. All right, so the next tip is decals. And so one of the things that you may not know about in Revit, there's a thing called decals, and they basically are, are just images that you can paste on to a 3D object. And so they're super easy to place. Um, basically just go into, you can even go into a 3D environment um, or a 3D view and you know, click the decal button, insert it, select the image, and then you can just basically stretch it onto a 3D object or a 3D geometry inside of Revit. And so I put a bunch in here from the, the last FCSI conference I went to, a bunch of sponsors there, but they, they look great. Um, so they, they come in, they look great. You can also use them for things like um, mimicking tiles. And so you'll see that here next. Um, I use them just as kind of pictures here, but you could do the TV screens or you could do just pictures or laptop screens, computer screens. You can kind of use these things to really just fill in any detail that's missing. And so here is what they look like in Enscape. Um, you can see that tile didn't come in yet, but you can see that these decals look great. They come in fully colored um, and just like a, a rendered image. And so also the, you know, I added a bunch of people in here, RVC families, you can see they come in really great too. And you know, as you move around in Enscape, you can kind of walk around these people. So it, they, they really pop in the virtual reality environment. The same view, but here I actually added decals for all the tiles. And this was just the workaround to actually get this tile to come in correctly. That way then I can actually show these renderings or this virtual reality and get the, the full look with Enscape, which you know wasn't able to do without. Um, and here's just one more look at it, just from a different angle. Um, I wanted to show you this just so you guys could see just the light coming off this glass um, and some of these trees and things that are outside. Um, these are all those RPC trees and this light coming off the glass is just a standard, you know, the sunlight from from Revit that Enscape picks up. And it just it just looks really great. Kind of, you know, this is a really, really quick, simple rendering if you want it to be. And I could just take a screenshot and, and really, you know, position it just the way I wanted to. Um, and that's why I feel like, you know, people think virtual reality, but really it's a really easy way to create, you know, really great looking renderings um, or what food service designers would call renderings just on the fly without, you know, waiting a couple of hours for stuff to get developed and, and you know, needing no skills whatsoever. I didn't do any special settings here. I just, just downloaded Enscape and, and ran it and took a screenshot at this particular spot. So next up, let's move on from single person virtual reality, um, and let's go to group virtual reality or, or collaborative virtual reality. And so this is a company called Insight VR, and um, special thanks to, to Brick Brunson for introducing me to this. It, this is this really um, opened my mind. I, you know, I knew group VR was coming, and I, I knew people like Enscape and Iris were, were working on it, but um, Insight VR's approach is much different than I thought, and I actually really, really like it. And so it would be something that I wish I could have used um, when I was a, a designer, but it, it's not that old. Um, I think it's even less than less than two years older, or certainly um, close to that. So the what you're seeing here is, you know, I think this is eight people, or maybe even more than that, in a room. Um, and this is a virtual room looking at a virtual model. And so all these people are probably at their own offices or maybe even on their, their couch at their own house. Um, and you can see they all have headsets and they all have these controllers. Um, what headset they have, it, it, who knows? They could have those um, Oculus Quest that have no wires or they could be using you know, Oculus Rifts that are, are tethered to their computers. Um, it doesn't actually matter. Um, I think actually they can even use Oculus Go's, the very, very simple ones that um, just allow you to kind of look around, but you can move around with the remote. I think you can even use those and, and follow somebody around. And so let's quickly, let me show you a, a quick video um, from Insight VR that um, explains how you would work together with a client, how you would collaborate. The workflow itself was similar to the Navisworks workflow, whereby the, the lead architects were coming to come into here, this environment, uh, saw where the potential clashes were, and started adding these labels. It was a huge amount of engagement, but mm -hmm. you don't necessarily see so much with a, a Navisworks workflow. Uh, it felt that everyone was participating on every sort of uh, every every kind of issue. All right. 
So I'm bringing up the annotations menu, and now I'm going to make a speech-to-text annotation. Plant clash with Steel East. And I'll go ahead and place it right there. Uh, the, the beauty of this uh, virtual uh, app is that you can, you know, you're, you're speaking. It's like having having your own little Siri sitting next to you, and you're you know you're creating an issue. So it has now become a one-person job rather than a two-person job. What is the resolution phase like? You know, so you, you've done your meeting, you've got all the annotations. What happens next? So it's not too dissimilar to our current Navisworks uh, workflow. The report that's generated from uh, Insight VR will be uh, sent around to, to people. We're going to come into the VR environment again. Right. We can come up to here. We can hope that this plant does no longer clash with the steel. And <laughs> that's ticked off. That's done. Do you think there's a future where, you know, instead of Skype calls, you guys are just jumping into the building and, and doing your meetings there? Absolutely, yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen. Um, and quite interestingly, on this particular project, one of the structural engineers, is, uh, he's based in Italy. Uh, we said to him, you know, you know, get yourself a headset. It's having this guy's input that we might not often have, and it could be critical to the project. Like most firms, um, time and deadlines are, are always a problem, and often model coordination, using existing tools, are deemed a bit of a nice to have that can easily get overlooked. If we can do more coordination with a wider group of people in a more user-friendly environment, identifying and hopefully resolving more issues, this will only add to the benefit of the design as a whole. And really, that's all the ROI anyone will ever need right there. All right, so that, that video, um, as you can see in there, you know, one, one of the things I wanted you to notice was it's not, it's not a really rendered environment. It's, it's a little bit video gamey. It's, it's, um, certainly colorful and it's certainly, they don't, they don't try and add that, that high, high end rendering effect to it. And I'm sure that's just because, you know, when you're putting all those people in there, they want to keep it fast. They don't, they don't want to slow it down. Um, but it also isn't really, you know, it's meant for really collaboration or, or it's, you know, it's meant for what you see here, you know, issue tracking and, and meeting reports. Um, you know, that's where I feel like they're, you know, the, the real, the real win is, you know, you get your clients into these meetings, um, have them walk around before, you know, you have to finish construction drawings and actually, you know, coordinate the project together. Um, you know, bring everybody in there, you know, if, if anybody who hasn't been in a 3D model clash meeting, um, one, one of the biggest problems with them is that, you know, yeah, you find an issue, but, you know, then it's just like, who's going to solve it? Why do I have to fix all the issues? Or, or you know, how come, you know, I, I feel like my stuff's more important. I can't move this equipment. And it just turns into a nightmare that has to go back and forth with emails. Whereas, you know, if you could just get everybody into the, into the building environment, this virtual world, then you could ask the question and, and figure it out right there instead of um, all this back and forth. So, Inside VR was, you know, very impressive, and I really thought that this is going to really change the way um, a lot of a lot of coordination just happens on construction projects, especially because we all have these three D models. Um, we all have them, you know, consultants, architects, and engineers. And if we can all just go, you know, and share these these models, then we can all share in this virtual environment where you know the whole project can benefit. And so. Next up, I want to show you uh, another one that's that's kind of like Insight VR, but it even takes it a step farther. And so it's called the Wild, and you know it's it's very new. It's, it's newer than Insight VR, and, and they have um, you know, it definitely seems like there's a lot of promising features ahead, but I don't think it's quite there yet. Um, I didn't actually try it out. It, it had a you know had, had somebody had to get back to me or a wait list or something like that. But the you know the big thing that they're their pitching is that not only are you um, collaborating and, and anybody can come into this this virtual world, but you're also able to manipulate things in the virtual world. So you can actually place objects, uh, move objects, or add, delete things. And so you could do this together. You know, two people could be designing a, a restaurant together, or, or laying out um, a storage room or a cafeteria, or, or you know, setting things up together, have an architect and a, an interior designer and a food service designer all in there together and, you know, see, see what happens. And so this is something that they also bill as a um, 
kind of like an immersive thing that's always in the cloud. Inside VR, you know, you can put BIM 360 models there and you can have the model living on the cloud. But the wild, you know, because of this manipulation and interaction with the model, I think that they kind of bill it as, you know, this, this permanent virtual world that anybody can join at any moment. And, you know, food service designers can enter there and update their designs or, or just walk around. And maybe there's already a superintendent in there measuring certain things. And so they really see, um, see this whole design thing as living on the cloud and, and everybody kind of accessing it from the cloud um, at any given time. And it's, it's a really kind of cool idea to think about. I, I don't think they're quite there yet, but it certainly seems like they're, they're headed in the right direction. Um, another thing that they offer is, is augmented reality, and I think they offer the ability to kind of overlay these virtual worlds or these virtual models onto a actual job site um, and kind of really bringing in the superintendents and the contractors to kind of see, um, just to kind of give you a kind of constant update of, of is the construction site being built per the virtual model and do we see conflicts and, you know, does somebody need to change something because, you know, it's in the wrong place or, or so forth. So that is the extent of the virtual reality part of this now we're going to move over to augmented reality and so first up um, let's talk about some of the devices used for augmented reality and i touched on this earlier but you know phones and ipads this is going to be the biggest thing that you're going to see um, the only other way to do augmented reality right now is the hololens and there's also a, a, a consumer augmented reality headset called magic leap that if you're interested in in augmented reality you should definitely look up magic leap it's it's um it seems very really 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 promising and cool for video games and, and just consumer consumer fun or um but it doesn't seem related to to business but the microsoft hololens is um is a very special and unique headset and it is one of the coolest things that i get to talk about in this whole presentation um it is already it is you know the Hololens the original Hololens which has now been replaced by the Hololens two. Um, it came out I think about two and a half two and a half years ago, three years ago, and it is really the only thing like it on the market or it was at the time. And it had a tiny little screen in this in the center. Um, I think it was two and a half inches diagonal, something like that, that would show you this augmented reality hologram. And the cool part about it is because it was a headset, it also had tracking in it and things like that, that you know you were able to walk around and see this augmented reality object in your field of view and within your eyesight, instead of looking through a phone or an iPad, which can get, um, I don't want to say cumbersome, but just difficult to kind of get a real idea of how to, how to have, you know, get human scale with this augmented reality object when you have to first look through an iPad to then see this object. Whereas the HoloLens, you know, it's just your eyesight. So at that point, you could walk up to a augmented reality bar and really get a feel for how the height is and where all the equipment is. Whereas, you know, an iPad, you have to have your hands holding an iPad to kind of get a feel for the space. And so this HoloLens 2 has added a lot more features, one of them being a much, much wider screen, which was definitely one of the limiting factors of the first HoloLens. It just felt like you were kind of still looking through a window at the actual hologram or, or thing that you were trying to see. Um, so the new screen, I haven't seen, I haven't actually tried on the new HoloLens, but um, I think the screen is supposed to be like, you know, three times bigger. And then it also has eye tracking software. So it has sensors that can see where your eyes are looking. And because of that, it can interact with this augmented reality um, environment. So it's kind of back to that merge reality idea. And so one of the things you can do, um, if you were reading, if you were watching a movie in augmented reality and it was, you know, displayed on your wall, um, or you were reading a, a newspaper or something like that, you could then look down and, and it would scroll the newspaper down because it could see that your eyes were moving down. Um, it could also just, you know, by, by the direction your eyes are looking, it could, you know, you could select menus or you could automatically, um, scroll through menus just based on how your eyes are or what your eyes are actually looking at so it seems extremely promising and, and a, like a really cool piece of of tech for just construction in general just because of the ability to to overlay 3d models onto a job site and so i think it's 3500 dollars for the new hall and i think the original one was about five thousand and so here you can see um Microsoft is very aware of, of how important this thing is going to be to construction. They, they 
came out this hard hat option quite a while ago at this point. And so this is very, this, you, know, you guys may have seen them on job sites already. They're very popular with large contractors and you can have a superintendent or, or anybody just have one on the job site and they can walk around and they can see these 3D models um, hanging in the air for duct work. Or if, it, you know, if you had one for food service, you could have a, have a client see the entire kitchen, you know, all laid out into an actual space. And so it's a, it's a, really great thing it's going to be you know getting easier and cheaper as time goes by but this is definitely something that you're going to hear about constantly in the construction industry because augmented reality and construction just go hand in hand they, they, they pair well together um, construction's all about you know building something or predicting the next thing to build and with a virtual model that shows a completed process that you can kind of separate into a kit of parts you can easily kind of overlay what the contractors need to build next. You know, here's where the ductwork goes. Then I want to bring in what the ceiling would look like and show me where all the light fixtures get hung and, you know, where's the floor tiles go. And you could, you could literally augment everything there just so that the contractors actually know where to place everything. And so I think the precision is down to about um, an inch or, or maybe less. Um, it's still not, you know, perfect precision for, for, you know, field measurements or anything like that. But you know, every time they come out with a new one, that, that seems to get a lot better. So all this technology is very, very new. Um, I did this presentation for, for FCSI Denver about 18 months ago, and, and researching this one, it was basically a completely new presentation. So um, all the group VR is new, a lot of the headsets have all been updated, um, and they just keep making leaps and bounds. So I'm quite excited to see what the, the next 18 months brings. And so we're going to watch here a video for Visual Live. And so Visual Live is a another app or software that can be used with the HoloLens, or it can just be used with an iPad or a phone to add augmented reality onto a job site or really anywhere. But it's kind of primarily for construction or AEC. And so let's watch this video. Welcome to Visual Live. We'll show you how our innovative solution can bring your models to life in three simple steps. First, you will need access to a computer to download our plugins and can be found in the Downloads section of our website. While viewing your model in Revit or Navisworks, simply place a VL marker in your model on any vertical or horizontal surface. Print the markers out from the plugin and bring them to the field, placing them in the corresponding location on site. Simply scan in the marker with your phone, tablet, or HoloLens device to instantly place your model in its real-world location. Easily load your models with your phone, tablet, or HoloLens. With Visual Live, it's as simple as that. Visit our website to find out more about how Visual Live can bring the power of augmented reality to your site in three simple steps. All right, and so you saw there, you know, it, it, they, they make it seem very easy. But I can tell you that with the iPads, um, it's definitely not nearly as simple as it is with the HoloLens. And the big thing is tracking. Um, you know, you scan a QR code, and, you know, that QR code places that augmented reality model in that space. But, you know, it now, as you move the iPad around, the augmented reality has to stay in a fixed position. And so with the HoloLens, it does a really great job of that. But with the iPads and iPhones, you know, if you were to jerk the phone left or right, it may lose the model or it just is not, um, it's definitely not perfect. And, and they're certainly getting better. But, you know, I would say that for construction, it's kind of, it's kind of tough using just the iPad or, or phone in that type of software. And so another AR software that I do think um, has a lot of promise is Cubity. And Cubity, you know, this demo right here is just showing um, how they they superimposed the whole building onto a field, actually, and then they, they're walking through it. Um, and I can tell you again, you know, with, with iPads and tracking, it doesn't work as well. It's just a, you can't augment a whole, a whole house onto a field and, and walk through it perfectly. But what Cubity does do really well is just augment a single piece of equipment. And so I did a, I did a short demo um, at the at the Host Milan show where I had my iPad and, and I downloaded the Cubity app and I sent a piece of equipment from Revit to the Cubity app and I superimposed it into the classroom and just kind of passed my iPad or just held it up so everybody could see this, this hologram in the front of the class. And for one single Revit family, um, it works really great. You know, it, it would work for 
you know, a dishwasher or an oven or, or all kinds of things like that that you wanted to place in a space. Um, for a chef's counter, you know, you could certainly place something and look far away, but, you know, trying to walk up to it and kind of walk around it, it just would feel, um, it, it, it would work, but it just, it wouldn't give you what you're looking for. It wouldn't really give you somebody a feel for how tall something is or, or how far their reach is or things like that, that you would probably do, um, that you'd probably want. And you could do those things with a HoloLens though. So if you really want that great augmented reality experience, definitely go out and look into a HoloLens or, or get your company to, to buy one and then you guys can share it on every project. Um, so the Cubity app though, you know, to, to send to send something or send a Revit family to use this Cleveland kettle. Um, to send a Revit family to Cubity, all you do is download the Cubity app. Um, it's up here in add-ins. You would just press export. It would make sure you're pay for Cubity. I think I'm still on a trial. And it just exports and it takes you know, seconds. I think it takes you know, 30 seconds or something. And then I can easily just open up my Apple or my phone or iPad and I open up the QBD app, you know, I have it logged in both here and there, and then I can just click this family and, and superimpose it in my office in just a couple seconds. So it's really, really easy to use. Um, if you send a, you know, you can, you, can, you don't have to use it for one-to-one -one scale. I mentioned earlier, you could do, you know, you could send a whole kitchen design and have it on your iPad and um, you could superimpose it onto like a conference table and spin it around and basically show somebody a, a you know, a holographic 3D model on their conference table of your design. And so it works really great for that as well. Um, as you can see here, I can open it in the browser, which, um, that is saying, yeah, so that's saying I could scan it with my iPad, but you can also, just wait, let's give this a second. You can also just open it in the browser. You can just send somebody a link and then they could access the single rabbit family or you could send them a whole design. Mm -hmm. Now I'm zooming in and I'm going down and I'm going up. Mm -hmm. So let's try it with a, with a whole model. So. And so again, let's we'll go up here, we'll go to Cubity. All right, so let's check out this whole model. So um, as you can see, you know, it does a, does a really great job of bringing in not just a single Revit family, but a whole model, you know, doing this in AR on your phone or iPad, it's not going to work that well. Um, you know, it'll start tracking and as you start walking, it'll, it'll kind of jump around um, and you're going to need quite a, quite a large soccer field or something to kind of walk around these spaces safely. But as you can see, you could give this link to a client just by, um, just by emailing it to them and then they could come in here and, and there's this walk thing. So I can do walk here. Um, let me try that again. I think I, yeah. And so you can just drop yourself in and you can walk around, you know, a client could do this without Revit, without anything. This is just a web browser. Um, and they could actually walk around this, this environment, just like you would kind of would in virtual reality. And so this, um, is, is just some cool features that, that allow a client to kind of experience all of this stuff without. And Enscape has something very similar to this as well. Um, but the, the augmented reality plus the virtual reality is something that's kind of unique to, to Cubity. And so I can just click reset and I can jump back out. Um, you know, you could change this. You can do mirroring, which is just it'll allow you to put this up on you know, onto a presentation or allow somebody else to kind of follow you, um, just show, show your screen somewhere else. And you can send it to those cardboard things where, you know, you have that, that simple virtual reality, kind of like the Oculus Go or Google Cardboard. 
And if you want to do augmented reality, you can just click this. Even your client, they could do this as well. Um, and they could download the QBD app and scan this QR code. And then whatever this 3D scene is that you've sent, they can then access that in augmented reality and superimpose it. So you could do a chef's counter. You could do a, a you know just a prep area. You could do um, a cook line or maybe a range suite and just send it to the chef and then say, hey, you know, check out your range suite. And they could download this app, free app. And, and scan this and then, you know, see augmented reality on their phone or iPad in their kitchen. So a lot of promising cool things here. Um, just, you know, right now I think it's just a bunch of different softwares that'll probably get, you know, all, all kind of consolidated here soon. Whereas, you know, you won't have to kind of bounce around to these different things. So let's end it here.